Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, and my guest today has had more career twists than a triple Lutz. She won gold at the 1998 Olympic Games at just 15 years old, and people cannot get enough of her color commentary with her BFF, Johnny Weir. And now she's appearing alongside Jim Carrey in Showtime's Kidding. The incredible Tara Lipinski is here. I have spent so much time watching you figure skate, but what I'm really excited about now is I'm obsessed with baking shows, completely obsessed, and you have got my dream job hosting one now. How did you get into that? The Wedding Cake Championship. Yeah, it's <laughs> so good. I don't know how I got into it. To be honest, I don't know how I get into most of the things that <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes. But Johnny and I, after this past Olympics, got the offer to do the show, and I was, it's my dream job too. Yeah, I mean, it's I amazing. Mean, I watch Food Network religiously. I love baking much more than cooking. Like, baking Me is too. my thing. Sweets are my thing. Like I do not go to bed without some like piece of chocolate or piece of cupcake or piece of cake. So when we got the call to do this, I was like 100%. Like this is it. This is where my 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 this life ends. Yeah, like, <laughs> dream job. Yeah, it was so much fun, and we got picked up for season two. So Congrats. we just uh, finished filming that. So you host it with Johnny Weir and you guys kind of became the highlight of the Olympics in 2014. Your commentary was just so good. Do you guys ever not get along? No, we really do get along. We have, um, we've had, we had one fight. We always laugh about it. It was like one disagreement very early on. And, you know, we're, we're so attached at the hip. We do everything together. You know, our, our job is, so, you know, pressure filled and there's so much happening that it's so nice to be able to work with your best friend who has your back. And, yeah. and it's, it's fun, like we laugh, which is the best part. You and Johnny both decided to use your popularity to bring fans back to figure skating, which is crazy to me because I used to wait specifically for the time of the night that figure skating was on. And I would watch you all the time with my mom and we were so excited to see it. And it does seem like it's not as big anymore. Why do you think that is? It, it just isn't, I think it's cyclical. I think it will come back um, in Russia and Japan. Skating is huge. You, the skaters can't even walk down the street. It, it's that insane. Huh. And I think hopefully at some point it will come back. But, you know, we were r like riding this wave of right after Tanya and Nancy. And then, you know, you had big names in skating, Michelle Kwan. And I was lucky enough to sort of be in the middle of it and have all those opportunities and be able to go skate in front of sold out arenas. And I think Johnny and I just, you know, the approach that we want to take to our commentary is just very honest, genuine, fun, entertaining, and, and I guess just in hopes of bringing, you know, the audience back to figure skating. It almost seems to like you need that big name that people latch onto for some reason. And, and I remember when I was young, I watched you. Like you were the person that I watched and, and people just gravitated towards you. You were that big star. Do you have any idea like what that was that made people love to watch you? I, I know that's hard I, to ask. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's very flattering. Thank you. I, I don't know. Uh -huh. I, I feel like at the time, you know, I was in such a, a great, you know, spot in my, in my career uh -huh. where, you know, I was competing against Michelle Kwan, who was also this big name and an yeah. incredible skater. And the stakes were so high. And there was just that the competition was there. And I think people like that. I think people like to tune in and root for someone and, and see good skating. And I think we've been lacking that a little bit, uh, you know, in, in, American figure skating. Do you think it has to do with the Olympics in general, that people just aren't watching the Olympics as a whole as much? I don't, I really don't think it's that. I think there's just not a star name. And I think at the time when skating was so big, um, you know, now there's so much on TV. There's all these reality stars. Back then, you know, somehow skating merged into almost a reality show. Sure. Oh, and, right. And it's sort of evolved. And I think now we don't really have that. But There'll be a time. I always say this. There's going to be a time that it's going to come back. Yeah. And I do hope that Johnny and I, you know, put on a good show and we have brought viewers back. And hopefully it's it's also not just to watch us or the, <laughs> or the show. It's to, to watch the skating. You might have to lace up your skates again <laughs> right. and get back out there. Uh, skating is not the only thing that you're a fan of, though. You're also a fan of basketball and of LeBron James. Oh have God. you ever met him? No, I have not met him. Like What? I love LeBron James like it is a problem like I've never really been a big you know celebrity like I've never really cared yeah. about meeting athletes or celebrities like I'm always appreciate like I appreciate their work uh -huh. and I enjoy you know watching you know an actor but I never feel the need to be like hey hi I'm like 
if LeBron James walked into like a room, I would die. Like I would have to go over. I would have to profess my love. Like I, I Where love him. Where did this come from? Okay, I don't know, but it's serious. So my husband is from Cleveland, so he's a big okay. Cavs fan. So you know, we watch, we watched a lot, and we, sure. now he's he's a Laker. Yeah. But I just like became obsessed. And then we went and we saw a game and we were like, we had like amazing seats and he was just like there. And he's like this God and he's so incredible and he's so good. He's such an amazing athlete, like competitor, uh, role model. I mean, I, I should be like his spokesperson. Like but I you're Tara him. Lipinski. I feel like you could meet him if you wanted to. You just have I to mean, make a call. I No, I don't know. I don't think so. It hasn't happened yet. Like I get myself upset during the games and the playoffs. Like for him. Yeah. Like, yeah. So now you're a total Laker fan. Oh yeah. Okay. I know my husband's like, you just, you just left. I'm like, yeah, I left. You follow I, the player. You follow LeBron James. A lot of people do that. <laughs> Is there a specific trait that he has that you admire? I mean, I think he's just, I, I love his approach to the game and he's so competitive, but he's such a hard worker and just, you know, I remember being on the ice and, and being in situations where there was so much pressure that I just like, it was overload in my mind and I would either be great or a disaster, but you, you kind of reflect back on that and you think, how did I do that? And he just handles pressure in this insane way that I admire so much and he you know he carries his team and he just is able to to play when it when it counts and i and i admire that if he ever sees it he's gonna be like she is a stalker no listen people feel that way about me and cardi b i, I feel like i'm probably <laughs> like on cardi? i love cardi b and i'm afraid i'm on her security list so i, I feel you yeah. on that but also it's respect right yeah, it's res I we just, respect them i think he's so amazing okay well I I do go to Laker games a lot. Oh my god, can I just like come with you? Yeah, like I think we should do that. We should set a is date. Is this a real thing? Yeah. Because you have no idea. No, yeah, we should do this. I, I don't think, I'm gonna be honest with you about something. I don't think LeBron likes me very much because I've actually been very critical of him. Oh, you don't like LeBron? You know, I admire, I know, I know. We could, oh, listen. We should have saved this for the. <laughs> no, no. I, I admire him as an athlete. He is the greatest basketball player right now, by far. Yeah. He is. Mm -hmm. I just, I think that he could be a little more humble. Well, I think he's very <laughs> humble. Like, you were very humble when you were skating. Some of the things he does, you would never do. But you know what? You would you earn, ever go up to a podium and say, I am the best figure skater alive right now? Would you ever do that? No, but you know, I feel like it's different. You know, like, first off, in figure skating, it's so stuffy sometimes, sure. you know, and like everyone expects you to sort of fit into this role. Mm -hmm. And I think he's earned it. And I'll say this too, after he said it, I was like, you know, that actually must be a really great feeling to just know that you are the greatest at what you do right. and you're just speaking the truth. I just, he's, he's gotten a lot of people fired. He kind of tries to be the okay, GM. I don't want, I don't want you to tell me these things. Okay. Okay. We, we, you know what? <laughs> I know you, some people got to look at him. You're right. fan. You can't tell me this. Listen, I think he's a great athlete. His work ethic is insane. It is insane. And we can still go to a game and cheer okay. for him. Yes. Okay. We can do that. Done. Okay, you're working with Jim Carrey in his new show, Kidding, mm -hmm. and we actually have a clip of it. I know how difficult it must be for you to let me represent you to thousands of young, impressionable minds. <laughs> but as a former love tenant in the Pickles platoon, let me say again, thank you for your faith. Oh, thank you for mastering my autograph. It's all about the pee. So in this show, you play an exaggerated, over-the-top version of yourself. Is that very far off from who you really are? Yes, it's okay. really far off. I mean, <laughs> the entire storyline is crazy. Uh, when I first got the call to do the show, my agent was like, you're not going to believe this. It's a Showtime show. Like, Jim Carrey, Michelle Gondry, like, read the script, but you have to say yes. There's no way you're saying no to this. Oh. And I read the script, and obviously, the, the writing the show is so incredible. Mm -hmm. And But the role is, like, a very warped version of myself. And I was just excited. I was like, yeah, why not? Like, what a challenge this will be. And, you know, there I am. I'm smoking, and I'm doing all... And you don't smoke. I don't smoke. Like, the, when we did the scene... I was like, my fingers were so stiff. Like, I was like, why can't, like, I could never be a smoker. I'd be the, <laughs> you the just most uncool smoker ever just because, like, my fingers were just like. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually hired an acting coach when you're playing yourself. So what is she possibly teaching you? Well, I just wanted to, to get a little comfortable with the scenes that we were doing. I mean, this is not a show that I would want to ever mess up. I mean, it's Jim Carrey. It's this yeah. big show. You know, I, I was 
sort of sitting there every day on set being like, please let me do okay. But you know who was like the best acting coach was Jim because really? I I mean I'm not shy, so I immediately was like, tell me all the secrets. Tell yeah. me, tell me, tell me. And he was he made me feel so comfortable and he was so invested in it as well. And he like helped me and really taught me so many things that it made the experience that much better. Were you intimidated at all by him? I was intimidated when I came out of my trailer and I sat down like this and it was like, okay, Jim Carrey, Jim I grew Carrey. up with all of your iconic movies and he, we're just gonna act, like what? And then the moment we got to like know each other and 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 sort of go on with the process, it you know, it was totally fine.